Hi everyone, this is Mary Ann here from Revealing Light, Tarot, Astrology and Spirituality. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your kind comments, your support of this channel. Um, it's very, very uh, gratefully received and very welcome. So uh, today, let's get started. We've got a bit to get through. Um, I've got viewers' requests, uh, obviously. Um, you were wondering about whether Bragg will be successful in um, keeping Jordan quiet, uh, pushing back on the subpoena, uh, who, uh, as we know, Jordan has been trying to interfere uh, with the uh, New York Manhattan DA's um, investigation and, and indictment of, uh, of the former president. Um, I think Bragg will, to cut to the chase, uh, Bragg will has a, has a very strong case and uh, and a very good case, and I think he's he's going to be successful in pushing back. And I also believe that Jim Jordan will find himself in um, in hot water, perhaps later on, with the Department of Justice over this. I think it's a clear case of a type, like obstruction of justice. So. Um, more, more, more will come on that later. Uh, I also said at the time, uh, I think it was in my podcast, I thought the DOJ might get involved in the expulsion of the Tennessee Three or Tennessee Two, who, of course, now we know Justin Pearson is back, uh, has been voted back by his metro by his own Metropolitan Council. I think it's Shelby. Anyway, um, he's back. Uh, they're back now. Um, it will remain to, to be seen now what Tennessee lawmakers might do about that. Um, but I did say I thought that the Department of Justice might get in, uh, might get involved in some way, and they, they are, they are uh, looking into what has gone on here, and I guess determining whether it was lawful. Um, Ukraine's counteroffensive with the release of the stolen. Uh, classified documents onto the interwebs. Um, there has been some doubt cast about the ability of Ukraine to launch a successful counter-offensive uh, counter in spring in the warmer months. We'll look at that. Many of you have asked, uh, will Prince Harry be okay? He's attending the coronation minus, uh, minus uh, Duchess Megan. She's staying back in America. Um, I just want to say, a personal point of view, it's perfectly understandable that um, Megan would not want to go and be. Um, I mean, it must must be pretty terrible vibes, mustn't it? We saw how um, you know there there was a like a almost a, people trying to avoid her. So why put yourself through that again? Um, Trump wire fraud. I said straight after January the 6th that I thought the DOJ would look into wire fraud. I thought uh, the two things that stood out uh, to me were obstruction of justice. Uh, I got that clear audiently um, back then uh, with the classified documents when I was reading on that. And we're in relation to January 6th and the big lie, wire fraud wire fraud. So uh, it's emerging now that the Department of Justice is subpoenaing people that might inform uh, on this collection of money from uh, from the public based on the big lie. Just on the big lie, um, Murdoch is in a little bit of trouble in the civil suit brought by Dominion. Um, they uh, originally said he had no real day-to-day uh, -day control of the company. It's now emerged that he has. He actually holds an office, chief chief executive office, uh, something, chairman, executive chairman, chief executive chairman, something like that. And um, so they misled the court way back then and it, it thwarted the discovery process because if he did have control and was making these decisions, then Dominion had the right to um, conduct their discovery um, that would, would have been relevant to the case. So the judge is not very happy there. Um, also... Uh, can't even read my writing now. Ah, yes, Macron, Emmanuel Macron in a lot of hot water over putting, trying to put the pension age in France up from 62 to 64. Um, it's 67 in Australia. I'm not sure what it is in America. Um, 
But anyway, there's been these pretty violent protests going on in France now and a lot of calls that he is trying to subvert democracy. He recently went to um, to China and basically said, well, if China was to take over Taiwan, I wouldn't like to see Europe get, in, get involved in this. It's between China and Taiwan and we won't necessarily follow America in that. We might look into just why and why he did that. Um, and the question of Taiwan generally. But let's get started. Um, I want to persist and pull an oracle card today. I felt that it was important. I don't always pull oracle cards at the beginning of the readings to check, do an energy check-in, but I felt it was relevant today. Uh, so let's take a look at the energy here. Definitely a crossroads. I'm getting the image of the Two of Swords. So... Uh, there are fairly significant signs and I might after this reading do a financial reading. I only did uh, I think up to the first part of this year in the reading that I did before Christmas I thought there would be that major bank uh, failing which it did um, and then I thought there might be a bit of a course correct and a wake-up call. I don't know about the second half of the year. I'm feeling a bit a bit uneasy about it all, but I think I'll leave that for a separate reading, whether it's today or uh, in the next few days. All right, back to that oracle cards. Oracle cards. So messages, the energy check-in, please, for those that may be looking for this message today. Hmm. Somebody might be feeling a little bit of insecurity here. A tidy house, clarity and organisation. That's that's good, good counsel. Um, you know, when we're feeling a little bit fragmented, sometimes it can just help by ordering our immediate, our immediate surroundings can actually take away burdens uh, and leave some space for greater mental clarity. So our physical surroundings, as you know, often reflect what's going on in here. Uh, so if you're struggling a little bit with clarity on over an issue, try just straightening up, tidying, decluttering. It could do wonders uh, for to really to have that breakthrough. So Willow the Wisp, treasures hidden in the shadows. Um, many of you ask when I make contact with um, passed over passed over people <laughs> they're not people anymore spirits um when i make contact with spirits whether or not i'm actually frightened i'm not i was when i was very young because i would see um i would see the formation like of apparitions and it really did frighten me and for many decades really until i got into my early adulthood i was actually scared of the dark i'm not now um because the what is within the shadows can be quite illuminating e even if it is just confronting your fears and closing the door and completion i think you know this is a narrative uh because when i started this reading i i saw like somebody playing with dolls or wanting to go back to that easier time in their life but um i think you know sometimes we've just got to step back and see the what the storyline actually is what is our story um and then we can close the door and complete that cycle caterpillar opportunity opportunity is always uh, around the corner and horned cactus resourcefulness i often say you are more resourceful than what you think you are and skywriting the fates the fates okay so there's a for some there's a destiny a destiny opening up here um and you're being encouraged with jupiter uh conjunct conjunct um aries you're in you're in, being encouraged to look at the possibilities and to believe in the possibilities to believe in the possibilities so what have we got here? Sun conjunct, sorry, sun conjunct. Is that what I said? Sun conjunct Jupiter. Okay, shining that light. Um, it's time for action now. Now is the time. All right, so um, let's move into the tarot now, the tarot questions. I'm using my Surrealist Tarot. It's a new deck, uh, so I'm 
breaking it in. Some people asked about the deck I used the other day. That's the Golden Art Nouveau. It's one of my favourite decks. I absolutely love it. And obviously people were drawn to it as well. All right. Uh, let's take a look. Um, Brag and the Trial Judge. As I said, I've uh, looked at this over the last couple of days and I think Bragg's got a very strong case I think he will win I also think the trial judge is going to clamp down a bit and set some more boundaries around it's not a gag order it's like still a partial gag order but spelling out what can and can't be said uh, and this could be this could apply to to anyone, to those in Congress that might be making these wild and outlandish statements as well. Let's just see. Um, let's just see. We're going to see a tightening up, whether it's uh, Bragg pushing, successfully pushing back and the trial judge um, setting some boundaries. Are we going to see a tightening up in this case? I think there has to be. Um, there has to be this kind of reset on this one. Uh, otherwise... Otherwise, it's anything goes. Okay, so show me, show me. Will the trial judge start to really enforce things, enforce what can and can't be said in the interests of a fair trial and not a media circus? Okay, so we've got the five of cups. There's a lot of regret here. Um, Three cups have been lost, but two are remaining. So basically, he's got something uh, that he can draw on, like a like a something up his sleeve. It's to dampen down the emotion here, and we get the four of wands. Um, so this is four of wands is is like a it's like a an occasion, something to celebrate. So we go from um, yeah. So he's going to be very fair. He's going to clamp down on those that are literally pouring uh, poison over things, um, saying this isn't a crime, having, you know, within the bounds of free speech. But he's also going to say those that are, uh, are saying that, you know, the former president is guilty before his trial. They, they have equally a responsibility as well. Look, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, I think the wind is in is at both Bragg and the judges. Uh, it's in their sails. I think they're doing the right thing. There is someone needed to be indicted for this. Um, it has bigger ramifications for uh, campaign. What can and can't be done with campaign money uh, right before an election? It, it's quite a serious matter given the margin uh, that Trump won by was so small and this is somebody that broke the law at that time or allegedly, sorry, allegedly broke the law at that time. So the King of Wands in the past and it's interesting that the King of Wands has a literal gag uh, around his his um, neck here. So I think that this judge is very restricted uh, in what he can and can't do in that he has to be so, you know, seen to be fair. Um, and we've got the Nine of Swords in the sky. There's a, a lot of, a lot of worry that with the immediate, the circus that this has become, can there even be a fair trial? We have the Ten of Swords. Something will be put to a stop here. Uh, this is the ending of something. Now, I know that Trump has a motion in to get this transferred to Staten Island where he thinks the judge or jury might be more um, sympathetic toward him. The Ten of Cups is the voter and the Five of Wands is the partisan. So he's most mostly, this trial judge is mostly concerned about the partisan nature the, politi the politics that are accompanying uh, this case. Uh, the Ten of Wands uh, in the hopes and fears, um, you know, it's it's just tough. It is just tough. And will it be too tough? And the Six of Cups is uh, going back to the past and uh, the president. The pres it's tough because he was formerly the president. We've got the Magician Manifestation of something and then we get retreat here. I, I don't actually, quite frankly, don't like the look of these cards. I'm wondering if 
something may occur with this case is it that his Trump's motion will be successful to get the case transferred it seems like he is though going to enforce something because that uh, what was stopping him is in the past and that four of uh, four of swords talks about retreat um, let's have a look so he's going to push back but this is a very very precarious precarious case um, for many many reasons so we have uh, now, will Trump's motion be successful to have this case transferred to another district in New York? Will Trump be successful in having this case transferred to another district in New York? Uh, it, Trump's sort of like self-destructing is what I see. Now, the world card is endings and beginnings. He wants a motion to dismiss, dismiss obviously. We have the King of Cups. Um, yeah, it all comes back to politics. The High Priestess secrets to be revealed. So he's really going to push the fact that judge, what, two $20, $30 donations to the Democrats. The Nine of Cups wish fulfillment is in the past. Will he be successful? The wheel, possibly. Fortune, favouring, but it's only a potential. The Queen of Swords, logic, law, the stability of the law. The Seven of Wands, defending himself, standing his ground. Page of Wands, moving forward with one wand, plan in place. The Queen of Cups, something to be revealed. And Temperance, moderation, moderation. Five of Cups, regret, loss, that's the emotion here. And the King of Wands comes again. I'm more uh, saying or seeing the devil is at the base of the pack. Ten of Pentacles, money, his business, and the tower. Okay, so perhaps because he he oversaw, he ruled on the Trump org uh, case, they're going to bring that into it as well, should he be hearing this case uh, too. Let's see where the major arcana comes, the hierophant. No, I think that the judge... It stays with this particular judge, but there's going to be a way to go in dampening down that emotion. So I'm going to say it's possible it could go elsewhere, but I don't think at the end of the day that it will. But this is a case that literally they have something they haven't yet. Trump's team has something they haven't yet brought to the table. It's kind of like baggage probably aimed at this at this judge he's just running a campaign of intimidation he's launched a frivolous lawsuit against michael cohen that i can tell you won't be successful but it is designed to intimidate all right let's move off him now uh, for the moment in new york and go to prince harry in the at the coronation the hermit isolation, mm, we know that. I mean, the pictures for an empath to watch, to watch what happens, uh, it's painful um, to the point where they awkwardly stand around because no one really wants to travel with them. They walk past people and the emotion on the relatives' faces uh, is terrible. Um and yeah, Prince Harry is sticking to his guns. He's fighting, fighting the good fight against the tabloids and lying lies. Um, I mean, King Charles was always destined to be king, but there is a legacy from his mother that he will, in her reign, that he will never be able, never be able to, to um, overcome. All right, so these are fated, almost fated positions, fated stories, fated narratives that play out in this family. Um, like all, all of us, they have their own karma to work through. So how is the, um, will Prince Harry be, 
How will he be? Will the coronation, will Prince Harry be okay? Some of you are worried for his safety. Will Prince Harry be okay at the coronation? Yeah, so I'm getting that he's not necessarily going to be involved in the, you know, the carriages, that pomp and ceremony. He's going to be pretty much sidelined, I think. But we have healing. Um, so there's a possibility there might be healing. Uh, King Charles is a Scorpio. It's always difficult to, if you've wounded a Scorpio, to... <laughs> to mend things, king of swords, there's a, there's a strategy here for, it's being well thought out, well thought out and well planned, um, easier to handle Harry than it is to handle Harry and Megan, the eight of swords restriction, I don't think that, I don't think that he, this is something that he wants to go to, but he is going to go to it, um, and he is going to be restricted in a lot of ways. The Ace of Swords, which is the truth emerging, that is in the past. And, of course, that over overlays everything here. Five of Pentacles in the sky, um, I think, taking away their London, their England, UK residents, was something that they, that they really didn't see coming. It was gifted to them from the Queen. It was their UK base. Um, I don't even know where Harry stays now uh, when he goes there. Um, Five of Pentacles, that talks about loss, shunned, avoided, being left out in the cold, being excluded. The Nine of Pentacles in the future, that's interesting. So it, I don't think it really matters to Prince Harry um, what they do. He has what he needs. Uh, and for all those critics there, the one thing that you can't take away from Prince Harry nor uh, Megan is the to have everything they want. They have everything they need. Now we have here the death card in the here and now. I think for the moment the relationships are over. And the Knight of Swords uh, it is largely because Prince Harry is pursuing the truth. Interesting, that card, Dada Phone. Oh, Dada Phone. Ah, oh, dear, oh, dear, I love the Surrealists. Um, I don't know that he's talking. He's talking. It's the end of the relationship. He's not. I don't even know that he is talking to his dad, to his father. Um so we have in the hopes and fears justice, very much a karmic, as I said, a karmic situation here. And for all those that are looking on, um, there's a wider story to be told here, which goes back right through Prince Harry's lifetime and what occurred with his mother. So we have here Princess Diana and uh, the Queen Consort, I think who is now going to be called the Queen. I don't think that's going to go down well, mainly because there is only one queen or there was only one queen in our lifetimes. The Two of Swords talks about a crossroads. Um, a crossroads. He's got to make a decision to, uh, about withholding. They're going to talk to him while he's there about withholding information. Stop bringing information out. This has got to stop. Um uh, and we get the Hermit card again, isolation um, and introspection. It, they're not nice cards. There's a lot of regret and loss uh, here. But we also have hope. We also have hope. So like all family um, estrangements, uh, there is hope for healing, but not right now. This is going to be a very difficult time for him, and they're going to talk to him about holding back on bringing any information forward and he will be isolated just like we've seen him being isolated he will be excluded from a lot of those uh, ceremonial type things um okay let's move to um let's move to what on earth emmanuel president emmanuel macron was trying to do with China. So I still think Macron speaks to Putin. Um, 
Okay, so what what did Macron hope to achieve? It's almost like he's travelling off to China, speaking for Europe, um, or trying to, uh, while his country's being trashed by protesters who are calling foul on democracy in France. So what was Macron uh, trying to do? What was Macron trying to do uh, by visiting uh, Xi Jinping in China? What was... Macron hoping to achieve broken something broken. It's like the tree is the the root of the tree is broken. Page of Wands. He was trying to draw headlines, draw the narrative away from what's going on internally in France. Um, and I get the Russian card as well. Um, So Macron is playing um, a multifaceted hand, if you want to put it that way. The Knight of Cups, there's an offer here. So there was an offer of peace, an offer of support. Hmm. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's it diverting headlines, but also cozying up to uh, the Chinese leader. He is anxious about what is going on in his country, uh, the wheel of fortune. In some way, he thought this might change his fortunes, but we get the Knight of Wands travel. I, I'm guessing there are those in, in France that actually do support Putin, that do support China. And Macron was having like a bet here each way. The Ace of Swords is the is the truth, clarity, but we've got defending himself. Yeah, in in a way, he kind of ran away <laughs> from what was going on in his own country. Six of Pentacles, hopes and fears. This is also shoring up perhaps the um, the ultra left vote in. Um, in in France, in some way, um, six of pentacles, loans and debts. Yeah, this is trade, finances, and the six of wands. He thought it he would be victorious. This would be a victory for him. I think in in a way it has, but there is much that we don't know about what went on behind those closed doors because there was a plan, there was a strategy, and it looks like there was some kind of deal struck between he and Xi Ping. Page of Cups, it was unexpected, and the Sun uh, and the Ten of Swords, yeah, definitely trying to change the energy, the narrative, but there was also some kind of deal struck. Now, it could be he backs off from Taiwan in, re in return for some kind of trade or help from uh, China. Um, I'm not even sure what France does trade with China, but there was definitely a deal done while he was there. Okay, so let's have a look uh, at Taiwan now. T uh, China did engage in oh, realistic, they weren't even war games, they had live ammunition and uh, rehearsing an invasion of Taiwan. So will China, will China invade Taiwan? Will China invade Taiwan? Okay, so I'm getting the High Priestess. There are plans there for an invasion. Uh, obviously that... But we get death here. Death and the past. The ending of what went on in the past. And we get looking across the sea. Uh, I think that all bets are off. They still believe that all bets, previous treaties, previous agreements, don't count now. Okay, they see they have a free path to invade Taiwan. Will they, though? Will they? Timing, I'm hearing it's all in the timing. Will China invade Taiwan? Five of Cups, not right now. Uh, and the Hanged Man. So they've paused. They were, and I, I think this is consistent with my last reading. They've paused but they're waiting for the right time. The moon card, they those plans are coming uh, to the surface. There's more there. 
and we get judgment in the past. It wasn't in it was an inevitability that they would, but is it still? In the sky we have temperance and moderation. Three of Cups, circles of support. Perhaps the timing is beholden to how much support they have from other countries drawing away uh, from the US. Four of Swords, they've retreated for the moment. That's good news. Um, the Queen of Pentacles, financial stability. Okay, that worries me. And the King of Wands, uh, we have in the Hopes and Fears. Waiting for the right time, waiting for support, and we have the King of Pentacles. Um, they do intend to invade. They absolutely do. It is an abuse uh, of their power, and I think financially they're going to try and somehow undermine uh, Taiwan financially, but they haven't made a final decision on the timing. So yes, they are. They have every intention but they're going to wait for the timing. And it has something to do with money. New starts, the full Eight of Swords restriction. <laughs> we are holding them back uh, and they're looking for support and commitment from, um, from a slowly playing the long game. All right, so um, where do I need to go now? Ah, uh, yes, I just want to look at Ukraine's counter-offensive. And then we'll finish off and I will pull some cards in a separate reading uh, to look at the economy over the next six months until Christmas. As I said, I just don't have a good feeling. Um, so Ukraine's counteroffensive. I mean, just be cautious. Shore up your investments. Make sure wherever you've got retirement nest eggs, make sure they're in the strongest um Resilient, most resilient place. Just do a <clears throat> check uh, and make sure that you've got your uh, finances diversified. Okay, make sure your banks are strong uh, and perhaps, yeah, just ha get go and do some research, get some financial advice as well. All right, so Ukraine. Will the Ukrainian counter-offensive... <sighs> I left out the Three of Swords. That's interesting. Heartbreak, loss and betrayal. All right. I just saw that card sitting there. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> will the Ukrainian counter-offensive be successful? Will the Ukrainian counter-offensive be successful? Queen of Cups, they're a lot stronger than what you think they are. That's good. Ten of Pentacles, money, weapons. They've got more support than what we think. Nine of Swords, foundation of the reading. They are anxious. They are anxious uh, and we are anxious too. There's some kind of temptation here with that apple sitting there around the seas. We know that Mali was supplying weapons to Russia via via Turkey before Turkey. There's something around Turkey and not trusting Turkey, Erdogan, um, before the war or before the invasion. Turkey supplied around 20% of arms to Russia. So Russia's still getting weaponry. Temperance, moderation is in the past. Will the counter-offensive? Mm, that's interesting. I definitely was meant to to grab that card. That's in the sky. Um, loss, heartbreak, betrayal. Mm. Five of wands, uh, divisions, obstacles. It's really hard, really, really hard for Ukraine. And there's a lot of anxiety here as well that they can actually um, mount this counter-offensive. The sun is in the here and now uh, and the four of cups, three cups lost, one remaining. There's a highlighting of just how tough this has been, is right in this present moment and we've got the page of swords in the hopes and fears there are some within ukraine there are spies within their own camp and i think it's a fear 
It's a fear that they're, we just in the West, we just do not understand the grim reality, the brutal reality of what that has cost Ukraine. The devil card um, is the outcome, greed, avarice, toxicity, darkness, not nice cards. And we get the king of pentacles clarifying the devil. <coughs> Money. But we also get the ace of cups. Okay, so all is not lost. Four of Wands is celebrations, reunions, Eight of Wands, things go, coming very quickly. And the Three of Wands, more help than what we know. Let's see what where else we go. So manifestation of New Start, manifestation of the, the weapon flow, the money flow. But we've got the devil, the devil here. And so I, I won't sugarcoat it. It's a gigantic effort. But I'm going to say that, and I don't know that it will be entirely successful. There will be gains because the Ukraine has been given more than what we think. Uh, as we have turned our eyes away from that conflict, there also has been a build-up of weaponry in Ukraine. So I wouldn't underestimate the Ukrainians, but they are fighting the devil. They are still fighting the devil and that devil is Vladimir Putin. All right. Bye for now. See you again soon.